Peace, this is King Noble Black Supremacy. And with this particular video, I want to talk about how every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to black supremacy. Black supremacy is the ultimate destination of every black soul. I don't want you to get lost into the words black supremacy. They're just unapologetically and radically correct and true. But a lot of times when you hear the word black supremacy, you liken it to white supremacy as the KKK or organizations that has used the term supremacy in a negative manner. So it distracts you from what black supremacy is. See, white supremacy has always been propaganda. It's always an illusion. It's always been a false pretense. It's something that is not real. It's been something postured. Black supremacy is a reality. It's a reality. It's not just posturing yourself. So don't get distracted by the word supremacy. Just look at the term or phrase black supremacy as it is just unapologetic, raw reality. Every knee and every tongue shall confess. Every being shall confess to black supremacy. Every conscious entity will recognize black supremacy at the very end of their journey to enlightenment and to realization globally. I don't care wherever they're at or wherever they're from. They will, they will get to the point of black supremacy. This is a fact. Black supremacy is the raw and uncut truth. And a black supremacist is just one who realizes it and has the power to stand on it and as it in the face of any and all things. That's it. That's what a black supremacist is. And that's what they shall continue to be. That's a fact. As melanated people, we essentially are the embodiment of black supremacy itself. It is our mother. It is our father from which we come from. We are that blackness, that eternal, infinite blackness is who and what we are. But we know ourselves not. We know ourselves not. The light shined in the darkness, but knew itself not. The light was the darkness. We are lights in the darkness of our own selves that do not realize the darkness is who and what we are. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to black supremacy. It doesn't want to say it. It doesn't want to get to that point. Nobody wants to get to that very point of black supremacy. But they're all saying it. All of our teachers have taught black supremacy. And all the conscious schools of thought, each and every one of them have taught black supremacy. If you're a Hebrew, you say that blacks are really Judah, really Israelites. That we're really the chosen people of God, the elect, the elite. We are supreme above all. We're the chosen people of God. We're backed by the supreme being, the supreme forces of the universe. God, we're backed by that. So we're exalted above everyone else. You're saying black supremacy. You might say, oh, we're not black, we're Hebrews, Israelites, whatever. But when you're talking about that which is considered to be the black man, is the Hebrew Israelites, and that which is considered to be the white Messiah really is a black Messiah, i.e. Hebrew Israelites. So you're talking about the melanated people. Let's not play with semantics. You're talking about a kind of a black supremacy, the black people being in tune with and connected to and dear to that which is supreme and backed by that which is supreme. When they come into the fold of that supremacy, you say it's through following the laws and statutes and commandments. However you may say that the, the route is to get to it, it is still reconnecting with the Supreme that we are reflective and representative of. If you say Jesus was black, you say that we're created in the likeness and image of God, so we are the representations of the supremacy on earth. If you say that we are five percenters, you say the black man is God, maker and owner, cream of the planet Earth, that we are the supreme being, that we are God. That's black supremacy. God is the supreme being. Perfection. 
So the five percent is the same. Black supremacy. We're God. We're supreme. The black people are supreme. That's a fact. If you go over to the Kemetic people, they're saying that we're supreme. We have the most supremest monuments on earth, the pyramids. And we created the most supremest civilizations in the Nile Valley civilization in, in Kemet and Nubia. You're saying that we are supreme. That we're the origin of all literature, language, all civilizations. That we are the original creators of all of that. That most advanced civilization that has ever existed in the now civilization, that we are descendants of that. You're saying we're supreme. You talk about us having melanin and melanin being dominant and, and um, white people lacking melanin and being recessive. You're saying we are genetically supreme over Caucasians. You're still talking about black supremacy. That's basically what you're saying. We're supreme over, over all civilizations, culturally supreme, genetically supreme. This is what you're teaching in the conscious community. This is what your historians and scholars are teaching. The Nation of Islam talking about the same thing as where the 5% teachings came from. The black man being God. That we're supreme. The people of God still saying that, that we are, we are gods. And that we're trying to achieve our supreme state through the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad you're still talking about black supremacy then they're talking about the white man being the devil and the black man being God we're supreme over them the original people the supreme then you talk about the Nuwabians you say we're the Nugaru the supreme race we're descendants of the, the Elohim the Anunnaki that we are supreme prototypes of beings on this earth. This is what the New Albions are teaching, that we are still supreme. Supreme people. Every single doctrine is teaching black supremacy. If you study it, they just don't want to reverence the embodiment of the totality of unapologetic black supremacy that King Noble black supremacy is bringing. They don't want to accept that. They're not ready to step fully into that and say black supremacy. Well, I don't want to say that it sounds racist. I don't want to use those words. But you use the word supreme and you use the word black, especially if you're a 5 percenter. What you mean you don't want to say black supremacy? It's in the dictionary. It's English. We're speaking English. We're speaking the English language. Why, you, why would you not use words? Because some white man has used it. But you use everything else that the white man used. But when it comes to black supremacy, you don't want to say that. Ah, I don't want to say that. I'll say black first. You don't want to say black supremacy. But you know damn well that's what you've been teaching, and you know damn well that's what you've been saying. But you're scared of this cracker. You're scared of this devil. And you don't want to stand fully in black supremacy. You don't have the t t testicular fortitude or the umpt. Not bold enough. To just go ahead and just say it. We just say it. And we live it. We live it. We, we allow ourselves to be fashioned and molded and sculpted by that. You say sovereignty, the sovereignty movement. You ain't saying nothing but black supremacy. Sovereignty means supreme. If you are sovereign, that means you are the highest. You are autonomous. You are self-government. You are the highest. You are at the highest level. Sovereignty just means supreme. There is nothing higher than you that can govern you or tell you what to do or put you under its jurisdiction or make you subject to it. So by saying you are sovereign, you are saying you are supreme. The sovereignty movement for black people is nothing but a black supremacy movement. It's saying, look, we are higher. We are higher. We are our own. We're higher than these people that are trying to rule and regulate and govern us, that we are higher from them. We are their mothers and fathers. We are the mothers and fathers of all civilization on the earth. So why are they running us and trying to tell us what to do and govern us? We're still saying black supremacy. We're still saying that we are supreme. Every movement that you name, 
within the conscious community you find black supremacy. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to black supremacy. The Rastafarian movement. If you deal with the Bobashantes, they're chanting black supremacy. His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I is looked at the embodiment and the manifestation of black supremacy in his advent and in his time. That's what he was looked at. That's what they were looking for. That's what the Jamaicans was looking for. The manifestation of black supremacy. And they saw that in His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I. But it's a new time now that we live in today and black supremacy is still manifesting itself. It's been manifesting itself for over 76 trillion years and it's come as many different teachers that we have had. Many different avatars. Many different Buddhas. Many different Christs. And it has returned again as His, as his Holiness King Noble Black Supremacy. That's the time that we live in then. But the difference is that I'm standing up and coming boldly and coming directly with black supremacy. I'm not beating around the bush. I'm not apologizing. I'm not trying to be validated. I'm not trying to make white people feel comfortable, feel safe, feel secure. I'm not doing that. I don't have time for that. I'm just bringing it as it is. Y'all been teaching black supremacy and I come as the embodiment to stand on and stand as black supremacy because only a real nation can come out of black supremacy it can't come out of nothing else if you're not supreme then you are not fit to autonomously independently govern your affairs because you're not supreme how can we trust something that is less than supreme to be autonomous so until you recognize black supremacy you'll never have black nationalism you'll never have pan-africanism because you, you are not supreme enough to do it. You can't make the ultimate final decision. That which is supreme is the highest ruling entity. That, that which is supreme is the final decision, is the ultimate authority on it. And if you have not achieved that and cannot recognize and see yourself as that, then you will have no nation. You only have ethnicity. You only have culture. You only have a parade. When you have supremacy, then you have a nation then you have an army, then you have a military, but you need supremacy. And, and the Tamahu or the European or the Caucasoid or whatever you want to call him is showing you that because he has the supreme what? Court. And the supreme court can even make rulings that's even higher than the president. We see this with what's going on with the administration that we have here today. The supreme court can block the president is the final rule and the final decision on all acts that's happening within this country. This is a fact. So if they didn't see themselves as being supreme, then they wouldn't have the integrity to have a nation. They would always be under something or someone else of which felt it was supreme or whom they felt was more supreme than them. And that is the situation that we suffer from as black people in America. And how conscious we feel that we are and what we feel like we know in our history, we still feel like there's something more supreme outside of us, whether it's a mystery god or a spook, or whether it's this damn devil that's walking around on this earth. We still feel like that there's something more supreme than, than us. So we cannot regulate and rule our own affairs to create our own autonomy, to create our own nation, nationhood, and to be respected upon the nations of the earth. This is a fact. All of these organizations have taught black supremacy in some way, in some fashion, in some form. Everyone in the conscious community, even the metaphysicians, teach that we're supreme. Just come out and say we're gods. We create our own reality. That we're manifesting this all in our mind and all in our consciousness and the power of our thoughts. That we are still the supreme beings. This is what your metaphysicians are teaching. We are the supreme beings through our conscious creation of reality, through our thoughts. By using occult magic and esoteric sciences, we tap into our supremacy. So they're still saying we are supreme. And if you're black doing that, then that would make you a black supremacist because you're a black person who is supreme. You can't be a white supremacist if you're a black person that's supreme. If you're in a black body and you're supreme, then you're going to be a black supremacist. So if you realize you're God in a black body, guess what? You're a black God. If you realize you're supreme in a black body, guess what? 
you're a black supremacist. Why does that word bother you so much? Because over here you can realize you're supreme and you're God and you have these magical powers and power of your thoughts and creating your own reality. And that you're a supreme entity internally on a metaphysical level. But then you come over here and say, but I am black. I do love my people and I do love my culture. But you can't put them together and say, well, black supremacy then, goddammit. You have to keep them separated. So when you're around white people, you love everybody. But when you in your metaphysical circles, you realize yourself as a supreme being as somebody who creates their own reality. You can't put them together. That's all King Noble did was he came and he put them together. He took your supremacy from the metaphysical and creative powers that we know we possess as human beings. And he took our love of ourselves and culture and our, in our ability to our, our inability to escape the skin that we was born in, which is black and melanated, put two together, you come up with black supremacy. That's all. You're going to be both. I don't care how metaphysical you get. If you was born black, you're going to lead this earth black. So you might as well be a black supreme being. You might as well be a black supremacist. You might as well see the supremeness of who and what you are. Not just mentally, but physically. And some people say, well, what about white people? What about how that makes them feel? If I talk about black supremacy, then that's going to make white people feel a certain kind of way. Well, if you love yourself and who you are, it doesn't matter how it makes somebody else feel. If you're coming into knowledge of self and the conscience of who you are, what the hell that has to do with how that makes somebody else feel? That don't even make sense. That's like mixing coonism. You're trying to be a coon and be a spiritual master, be a metaphysical master at the same time. Coming into knowledge of, you, of yourself doesn't matter how somebody else feels. It just doesn't matter. How they feel is how they feel. Who you are is who you are. What your journey is what your journey is. So you shouldn't have no problem being a black supremacist. And if you have a problem with being a black supremacist, you have not reached the final stage of your awakening as a conscious entity. You have not reached the final stage of political consciousness. You have not reached the final stage of black self-love. You have not reached the final stage of black nationalism. You have not reached the final stage until you can utter out black supremacy. You have not reached there. That is what it all was arising to. All your teachers was pointing to that, wanting to get you to see that. And not only want you to get you to see that, also getting you to see what you could do if you could be that. Because if you recognize yourself as a black supremacist, then what's going to come from you as an entity? The same, we're going to keep coming with the same excuses that was that's kept us under white supremacy for over 400 years? You can't make those excuses no more. Are you still going to continue to be under this white man and be apologetic and be cooning and shucking and jiving? You can't do that no more once you realize that you're a black supremacist. Only that which is supreme can come from a supreme being. So now your actions have to bear witness to your knowledge. That's your understanding. So now we have to look at your ways and actions and we can see the mind of a supreme being. The mind of an entity that see themselves as being supreme. That's going to change the whole universe. That's going to change our entire condition as a people. It can't be the same if the average person in our community realized they was a supreme being. It wouldn't be the same. We wouldn't go for this that we're going for today. We wouldn't feel so victimized and powerless and vulnerable. If we acknowledge we were supreme beings, we reached the stature that we once was at, that our teachers have talked about in the ancient civilizations. That which attests to our greatness. We would live up to our legacies, and then we would actually transcend past our legacies to bear witness to the supremacy that we really possess as a people. Every knee and every tongue, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to black supremacy. And that's all the black supremacist is really causing to happen. That's what we are putting into motion. That's what we have come here, because this is the time of the complete awakening of black people. Not just knowledge, not just information, not just regurgitation, but complete awakening. That's the time we're in right now. Complete, unapologetic, total awakening. And that will be the answer and solution to our condition as a people. Because if you don't have, if you don't acknowledge yourself to be supreme, then you cannot come up with a supreme answer and a supreme solution. You cannot. This is King Noble Black Supremacy. Join my website, www.kingnobleblacksupremacy.com. Donate and don't hate.